します。Hello and good evening, friends. Today we have a very special guest for us, Professor Zubin. On behalf of the ACNS Education Committee and the President of CIA Kukato, I welcome the speaker, Professor Zubin, and all the attendees for who are attending this wonderful lecture of the second top second of the master series webinars organized by the ACNS Education Committee. Professor Zubin. needs no introduction he himself has a huge fan following in this part of the world the man with the largest number of bypasses from omrtcs and uh, yesterday itself of such you have was mentioning if you want to learn bypass you go to subin so i am not keeping you waiting from uh, between the talk and subin so i'll sign up and i welcome professor subin to please start his webinar professor please take over Thank you, thank you, Raja. So uh, tomorrow, my topic is simplifying uh, STAMCA bypass surgery. Uh, I'm in Shanghai. Uh, I come from Fudan uh, University, Huashan Hospital. So this is uh, uh, my uh, colleague from uh, Italy. Her name is uh, Alicia Fratiani. And uh, <clears throat> he come to uh, train in our hospital for two months. So this is uh, some of his uh, 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 slides. How can residents train uh, for bypass surgery in the modern era? Now, because the uh, uh, decreasing number of the aneurysm, especially the complex aneurysms, so less and less cases need bypass surgery. And uh, in the especially in treat the aneurysm case, endovascular uh, now is a uh, uh, supremacy. And uh, for training the bypass, they have a long learning curve, and uh, there's mm. no standard for training. So bypass surgery is uh, just like uh, uh, running on the mountain. Uh, actual trail, trail. Bruce Lee said that uh, challenging things are interesting, so don't pray for an easy life. Pray for the to endure a difficult one. My uh, friend uh, Professor Luca Rickley from Zurich, he said the easy job is boring, so we have to have some balance, coordination, speed. Concentration, agility, patience, flexibility, and the uh, perfectionism. So this is uh, all we need in perform the bypass surgery. So the first step is a uh, train uh, on the model, and the second step is a uh, live model training. The three, uh, the the third step is a uh, high flow center exposure. So this is a model training. We can, uh, the first step, we can use some uh, plastic glove, sutures, silicon models, plastic center vessels. Then we uh, can use some uh, live model training, uh, normally on rats. So then we can uh, adapt to heart rate and the respiration, the uh, le how learn learning how to control the tremor under the uh, fear the uh, fear depths under the microscope, and uh, we can uh, uh, feel the feedback from uh, fingertips. So this is a, a animal model. This is a animal models uh, bypass performed by Alicia. So we have to make the steps uh, easier to be handled by the uh, trainees. 
uh, after come back to Italy, Alicia already performed the eight uh, STMCA bypass successfully, and uh, uh, her uh, she achieved the one hundred percent patency. Last week, uh, she had three bypasses. The mean occlusion time is 20, uh, 23 minutes. It's quite fast. So this is a five months follow up. You can see the uh, vessel was uh, patent and enlarged. The blood flow is very good. The third step is a, a train in a high flow center like uh, our hospital. Uh, in my hospital, uh, averagely, I have uh, more than 20 bypass per week. So this is uh, our hospital with the campus. You can see uh, this is a, a, a new campus just opened uh, last year. Now we, uh, totally we have around 800 beds in our department only in neurosurgical department. We have around 40 operating rooms and uh, one cent uh, center laboratory. Uh, last year, we have uh, uh, 18,000 operations in four campus. Uh, this is my personal experience in bypass. In, uh, uh, till now, I have more than uh, 7,000 bypass cases. My personal record is five uh, minutes, 40 seconds to finish uh, stoma. Three cases, uh, 13 cases before uh, 8.30 p.m. in five operating rooms and uh, 35 cases in one week. Last year, I have uh, 1,039 cases. So this is uh, uh, after 10 cases uh, in one day we still have time to have a dinner. So STMCA bypass is an end-to-side uh, anastomos. It's a most adopted blood flow augmentation procedure. So the indications include Moyama disease, complicated aneurysms, MCA occlusion or IC occlusion. For this kind of patient, uh, normally they already have some ischemic condition, so the time is brain. The mean temporal occlusion time, uh, if you use a traditional uh, STMCA bypass, which will uh, use some silicon uh, mat, uh, in course trial, uh, the mean occlusion time is more than uh, uh, 50 minutes. And, uh, uh, normally, 20 minutes in a very skillful bypass uh, neurosurgeon uh, is very fast, already very fast. Uh, but if you uh, take uh, our uh, simplified anastomose technique, normally 20 to 30 minutes in a trained beginner. And the, uh, my personal record is uh, uh, 5 minutes, 40 seconds. So the mean occlusion time of my series is a uh, 13.5 minutes. So this is a double bypass of STA to MCA. You can see under the latest uh, uh, model of uh, Zeiss microscope, you can see the ICG very well. And this uh, right on the right side is the uh, IC uh, flow 800. So for this kind of patient, uh, I always uh, performed the first bypass by myself, then the second one uh, performed by my assistant. So in bypasses was all, always performed by them uh, in this way. So this is uh, uh, my colleague, Dr. An Qing Zhu, and uh, this is uh, his learning curve. You can see this is uh, the numbers, the case number. Uh, the first year is uh, 10 cases, then the second year 14, 19, uh, 27, and then 
95 last year. And this is a, a patent rate. The first uh, year is around the eight, uh, 80%. Now it's already achieved uh, 96, 90, uh, 93%. So this is a complication rate. But the first year, it's around uh, 7%, uh, now decreased to 38%. So this is a mean occlusion time. So the first year, the mean occlusion time, uh, temporal occlusion time is around 40 minutes. Uh, now it's around uh, 20 minutes. This is uh, uh, my another colleague, Dr. Uh, Gao Chao. Uh, this is a his learning curve almost the same story uh, with Dr. Anqing Zhu. And this is uh, uh, his number of bypass. The first year, 54. Uh, last year, he performed 136 cases. So this is uh, the patent rate uh, from the beginning. Uh, it's around 80, uh, 81%. Now it shifted 97.4 percent. This is a complication rate. It's already uh, it's uh, decreasing steadily, and this is a mean occlusion time. It's all uh, also from uh, around 40 minutes to 20 minutes. So this is uh, my uh, another young colleague, Dr. Liao Yujun. Uh, this is. Uh, and this is a, uh, his uh, case number from uh, 10 cases to uh, 55 uh, this year. And uh, it's already, uh, uh, it's almost uh, 42 minutes uh, temporal occlusion time now decreased to 24 uh, minutes. So, uh, this is a complication rate. This is uh, my uh, another uh, colleague, Dr. Xu Feng. Uh, he, go, uh, he go to the Tibet uh, to support the local hospital for one year. So last year, his uh, number is zero. But now you can, uh, you can see still, uh, this is uh, uh, the numbers, uh, numbers of the, uh, his bypass cases. And this is a, a temporal occlusion time. Uh, it's from uh, almost one hour. Now it's around 22 minutes. So I don't use uh, cut down technique. I use uh, uh, dissecting the STA or post auricular artery or occipital artery from inner side of the scalp. Use a, a small power monopolo like this. So it's very fast. Uh, it's only uh, take uh, three to 10 minutes to harvest a uh, branch of STA. After harvest the STA, I always close the incision of the superficial temporal fissure from inner side, like this way. So sometimes uh, I suturing, sutured the two layers. Uh, this is a gary uh, and this is a superficial temporal fissure. Sometimes if the circles was uh, uh, wide, I can uh, fix it with a, a dural uh, strip like this. So after this kind of treatment, the delayed scalp healing or infection of scalp never happened. It's not the daily increase, but the daily decrease. Hack away at the un, uh, unessential steps. So I always make the uh, steps more and more uh, less. So now I call this the most simplified anastomosing. Uh, actually, this is termed by uh, my friend uh, Fadi Chabert. I only use two or three curved micro temporal clips to uh, temporal clips the uh, recipient artery. And then uh, don't 
uh, sacrifice any branch of the recipient artery. I never use the rubber mat or silicon rubber tubes. I only take the interrupted suturing, square knot is enough, and I never take unessential steps. So this is a square knot, uh, also co uh, called uh, sailor's knot. You can see the square knot, the suture tail always point to the di uh, different uh, direction, the reversed di direction. So this is a uh, square knot, so it couldn't be loosened. But if you point uh, the suture tail to the same direction, like this way, actually it's a slide knot. You can see it's uh, not a effective knot. So uh, consider the, the uh, topograph of the recipient and uh, it's uh, like this on the surface of the brain. So you can uh, temp use a temporal clip to accrue the, the recipient artery under the small branches very easily. But sometimes uh, it's like on the slope of the valley. So this kind of uh, condition, you can use a temporal clip to uh, accrue the, the, the recipient <laughs> artery in an oblique way. Sometimes it's uh, like in, uh, in the valley, in the uh, circles, so you can uh, lift the recipient artery a little bit, use uh, temporal clips to make the uh, anastomos more easier. And sometimes uh, if, the patient, uh, if the recipient artery uh, wall is very thin, Sometimes I will left a tiny uh, branch to uh, open to uh, permit the slow reflux of the blood flow. So the stoma should keep oval shape as natural branches. So this is uh, my uh, different. Uh, with uh, some other uh, neurosurgeons, uh, like uh, uh, Dr. Lawton, he recommended this uh, fish mouse technique. So I, uh, we can calculate the, uh, the fish mouse, uh, the relationships among the diameters, parameters, and the cross section area of fish mouse like anastomosis. Uh, according to the fluid me uh, mechanic uh, formula, for uh, we can calculate the uh, resistant coefficient uh, zeta of the fish mouse stoma. So uh, this is a uh, A3. A3 is a uh, <coughs> area of the uh, stoma, and comparing to this A1, so the uh, greater the ratio. A, A3 to A1 is the greater the resistant co uh, coefficient is. So the resistant coefficient zeta is uh, uh, proportional to the square of A3 to A1. But if, the, if we use the uh, uh, oval shape uh, stoma, I recommend it, uh, this uh, kind of stoma. The relationship among diameter, Perimeter and the cross section area of uh, ovoid uh, anastomosis, we can also calculate it. So, this is uh, uh, the formula according to Floyd, uh, Floyd uh, mechanics. We can see that under the same condition, the ratio of the A3 to A1 is closer to 1. So, So zeta uh, according to this formula. So the local resistant coefficient uh, zeta is a uh, smaller comparing to the fish mouse and the local e uh, energy consumption is lower. So I recommended this kind of uh, stoma shape. So normally I use
this is the second one at the here, and then this is third one, then uh, one side from four, five, six, seven, then this side. So after the first stitch at the toe, there's uh, still the <clears throat> the donor uh, oval shape is larger than the recipient one. You can use uh, uh, scissor to open here again to make the size uh, more closely. Same thing. You can uh, use a scissor to open this donor part. So this is a real video, real time video. This is a 10, uh, ten zero protein suture for Ethicon. First stitch is at the toe, then at the heel. So the square knot, uh, the suture tail always point. When you making the stitch, So the uh, diameter of the recipient artery is around <clears throat> 1.2 millimeter for this case. Six minutes, it's finished. So this is a uh, after the anastomose, you can see the pulse is very good. And sometimes I left a tiny perforator of the recipient artery open to reflux. So this can, uh, this can uh, keep the two layers of, of the recipient artery unattached with a small uh, pressure of reflux flow.
you can see here is a small perforator uh, uh, here. And uh, if the, your assistant irrigates the surgical field with a, a saline, a heparin saline, don't wor worry about the embryo. Actually, with the help of the blood, the red blood, you can see the two layers of the face of very well. So sometimes I, I think this is a helpful. So this is a, another technique of a loop technique. So this is a real video of loop technique. So one loop can make two stitches, two loops, three stitches. Then cut the loops, so it's a still uh, interrupted suturing. Then make the knots separately. So sometimes we ha uh, we could encounter some extremely thin wall. So for this kind of uh, uh, cases, it's uh, extremely difficult. So that even the needle hole can cause bleeding. So you should make sure mm, no kinking of the suture. And uh, it's a very easy to tear up the recipient uh, arteries wall. So sometimes we need some uh, additional tissue to help. Uh, we can use arachnoid membrane, fat, or tissue to fix the uh, uh, needle hole. Uh, gel form is very helpful in uh, hemostasis, and uh, we also give it time. So, like this patient, this case, 
under the microscope, you, you, you can you can hardly see the <clears throat> recipient artery very clearly. It's so thin. Every step will, sh should be very careful. So the recipient artery vessel wall is uh, almost transparent. So when you pour the suture, you should make sure there's no tension at the position of the recipient arteries wall. And make sure there's no tension when you make the knot. So this is a, a you can lift some suture. Don't cut it all. In case there's some hole, you need some bunch, some additional tissue. So when you remove the, uh, try to remove the distal temporal clip, you can see the blood flow reflux through the needle holes of the recipient artery. So just to give it time and to try again. And it looks there's yeah, some tear up of the recipient artery here. So I give it additional stitch. Very careful. and then cut the, the other sutures. then use some fat tissue to make it as a pedal.
you should all when you make the knot. Then try to remove the temporal clip again. So you can see every needle hold, needle holder holes are bleeding. So this is a terrible condition. So use gel form to help the hemostosis. I already make sure there's no big holes. Only the ne uh, needle holes are bleeding. Then try again. And give it time. So give it time. So let the platelet do their jobs. Now you can see the, the breathing is uh, less and less. Then remove the proximal temporal clip. So finally, you can see 
the final result is quite good. So the vessel wall is almost transparent. You can see the, the blood in the vessel so clearly. So it's almost transparent. So this is a extremely, extremely uh, thin vessel wall. Sometimes we, uh, we can make a patch like this, so tie up like a lotus root. So this is a, uh, the fat tissue. You can see we can tie up like a fat tissue uh, surrounding the stomas. So I prefer to choose the bifurcation uh, of the location uh, as a recipient uh, artery. So uh, this kind of uh, bifurcation, the recipient artery can distribute the blood flow more quickly, more efficiently to the uh, brain. This is also close to the bifurcation. You can see the to the brains so quickly. Uh, sometimes we can uh, use uh, uh, one single uh, branch to make a double barrel bypass with a parietal branch of a STA. We can if the parietal branch you dissect it. Uh, uh, long enough and there's two recipient artery in the surgical field you can make a, a double layer bypass a double barrel bypass like uh, like this way to make a, a additional end to side uh, stoma to the donor artery so then we can create the additional donor artery So this is a single bypass, double bypass, sometimes uh, even triple bypass. So the, uh, why I insist the uh, square knot uh, and, the, uh, and the interrupted suturing because the stoma can be enlarged like this. You can see the follow-up case, the stoma enlarged a lot. So if it's continued, uh, actually, the stoma can fixed in a uh, same size. So this is a long-term follow-up uh, of ECA. You can see the ECA uh, supplied the almost the whole brain. So bypass uh, is not a dying art. So the ischemic brain can be re uh, revascularized. So the simplified uh, bypass technique is, is easy to learn by uh, residents. And the Bruce Lee said, uh, how to manage the frustrate, uh, frustrating things. Defeat is a, a state of mind. No one is ever defeated until defeat has been accepted as a reality. So, Knowing yourself and uh, your enemy, then you will never be defeated. Uh, this is a so-called uh, by Mao Zedong, Zhi Ji Zhi Bi by Zhan Bai Shen. Okay, thank you. That's all. Yeah, well, thank you, Professor. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That was a wonderful lecture. I see you are a huge fan of martial arts. Are you a martial arts expert yourself? <laughs> no. <laughs> No, <laughs> right. Uh -huh. We have so many questions as of now. Uh -huh. Uh, uh -huh. People who are tiring. I'll start from myself first. Okay. Uh, okay. Un unlike in Japan, that we see that when the whole uh, uh, vessel, uh, donor vessel is skeletonized, you keep a lot of adventitia over the STA. So, is it to avoid vasospasm, or what is your rationale for that? I actually I only dissect the very uh, small length of the donor artery, uh, only two or three uh, millimeter, uh, just uh, permit uh, the uh, anastomose. That's enough. So I don't uh, dissect the 
make it uh, looks very uh, very keen. Actually, uh, if the uh, vessel have some uh, surrounding uh, tissue, that's better, I think. Okay. There's so, no less chance to have some uh, vessel space. Right. Regarding the technique, mm -hmm. also many neurosurgeons prefer to put a dab under the uh, anastomotic site in the form of a plastic sheet or whatever the glove. But I, we don't see it, uh, you using yourself in the videos. Uh, yes, I never use it because actually, if you want to use some. Uh, uh, silicon rubber uh, mat uh, you have to dissect the, uh, the some space uh, beneath the recipient artery and then long enough at least maybe five millimeter so this kind of uh, space uh, especially in uh, moyama disease uh, actually there's also uh, always some uh, perforators there so you have to calculate the uh, small perforators and then put the uh, silicon mat under the uh, vessel. Actually, this is a, I don't like this technique. Right. Sir, what is the usage of uh, anticoagulation? For, what is your anticoagulation policy in preparing the patients before and after the nastinosis? Uh, it depends, you know, uh, for the uh, chemical condition. Uh, for the occlusion uh, cases, uh, for the real moya moya case, normally I uh, never use aspirin or uh, Prevex, but uh, sometimes for the ischemic, uh, for the occlusion like IC occlusion or MCA occlusion case, uh, if they have some TIA, uh, I still give them aspirin. 100 uh, milligram is enough. And during anastomosis, do you use uh, uh, systemic heparin? No, uh, no, no. Only, only, only uh, heparin setting irrigation. Yeah. Same as what Professor Lawton uses. Mm -hmm. And another uh, thing when I was going, what is your incidence of uh, hyperperfusion syndrome you have noted? Because following STMCA and uh, anastomosis, it had, there have been so many literature quoting percentage from 15 to around 67%. What is the yes, first yes. Uh, actually, uh, in my single bypass uh, of Moya Moya, it's around uh, uh, one third of the patient have the, some uh, temporal neurological deficit uh, happened. Uh, in the double bypass, it's around uh, forty percent, and uh, for triple bypass, I only do. Uh, four cases of triple bypass, but uh, half of them have some hypoperfusion syndrome, so I stopped it. And uh, <clears throat> so now I only use a single bypass, but uh, uh, we still have some uh, temporal neurological deficit, but this is not a, a big issue because uh, most of them can recover the very well in uh, around uh, 14 days. Is there so any specific treatment do you use for hyperperfusion syndrome? Actually, I don't uh, never use uh, uh, the, ter uh, the, the term of hyperperfusion syndrome. Actually, according to our study, uh, there's even more uh, cases. Uh, actually, it's uh, hypoperfusion, not hyperperfusion. Uh, so around the uh, Forty-five percent is a real hypoperfusion, but uh, around the fifty-five percent is uh, hypoperfusion. Another interesting article I came across recently is the uh, performing STMCA by anastomosis uh, under local anesthesia. There is one paper that came from Jifu, Japan, that uh, published in ACTA. They uh, they published around forty-seven cases of. Uh, uh, STMC bypass under local anesthesia. What is your experience in this regard and do you recommend this policy? Uh, I beg your pardon? Performing STMC bypass under local anesthesia with only IV dex medicin and uh, unprotected airway under local anesthesia. Do you recommend it? Not under general no. anesthesia? 
no, year? no, general, all, always general. Yeah. Always general. Mm -hmm. Right. Thank you very much. So if, if there are more questions, please come in. Satish, would you like to come in? Hello, Prof. Uh, can I ask a question? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're the co-host. Yeah, uh, yeah, first of all, I need to thank Prof. So allow me to join you uh, last two years uh, for two. It's a really great and uh, amazing uh, experience uh, tagging with Prof. My question is uh, based on the pre-op uh, DSA, how much does the DSA able to help us to predict uh, the successful for us to find the recipient in Moya, Moya disease? Uh, TSA because uh, sometimes you know especially for the uh, uh, pre-operative DSA sometimes you you should combine the DSA and the MRA or CTA then you can uh, tell is there uh, any recipient uh, artery sometimes even uh, after the open the dura you can find is there any real uh, uh, suit, suitable uh, recipient artery because uh, before the uh, surgery actually the, when the uh, contrast uh, flow uh, through the uh, moya moya vessels it's always uh, diluted a lot so uh, sometimes if it's dilut uh, diluted too much it couldn't uh, shoot the distal vessel very well. So you should uh, combine the both DSA and the MRA to uh, make a judgment. Sometimes even uh, after open the dura mat. Are there any more questions? So what is your follow-up for follow imaging? How do you follow up the patient post-operative? Uh, normally, we follow up the patient. Uh, six months later, we will uh, <laughs> uh, follow up angio uh, angiogram again to see the uh, uh, revascularization. Do yeah. you follow up with uh, a TCD or MRA something? Mm -hmm. Immediate post-op, do you follow up with an MRA or a TCD? To see that any occlusion? Angiogram, angiogram. Angiogram is the uh, uh, golden standard. Yeah, wait, come in. Can, I, can I do a question? Yeah, please. Hi, please. Rosanna. <laughs> Hi, Vin, how are you? Rosanna, hey, fine. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> a wonderful you. presentation. <laughs> Very nice yeah, to yeah. see you. you. Okay. Yeah. Now, I just want to ask you when uh -huh. you have, because actually we have a bypass next week. Uh, and uh, 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 for ACE, anterior cerebral artery territory as well. Mm -hmm. Because for, for sometimes you have the STA, which I mean, you can do the STA M4 uh, bypass and then you mm -hmm. can cover the MCA territory. But what about the ACA? If we don't have a very good STA, it's just enough for the indirect bypass. So what do you advise? Uh... Actually, this is another topic uh, for the uh, ACA territory. Normally, yeah. I was uh, uh, I I use a uh, uh, chrono incision, and uh, I use I will use uh, uh, bilateral uh, frontal branch of STA to make the uh, anastomos with the ACA territory recipient arteries. So the contralateral as well. Yes. Yes. Normally, uh, bilateral. Thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. You're welcome. <laughs> yes, Vic, would you like to come in? Kimura Dr. Vic, you'll have to unmute yourself. Dr. Vic, please unmute. Uh -huh. I'll do that. Uh, Professor Bin, I have a question for you. Uh, it was a great talk uh -huh. and uh, very inspiring talk. So uh, basically what I wanted to ask you is what is the idea behind uh, primarily closing the uh, superficial templar to the August site uh, uh, before closing, uh, I mean, before performing the anastomosis? Do you think, uh, what, what do you think uh, is the bearing for uh, that, it, that it has towards the survival of the plant? 
sorry, you have a lot of background noise. So I can. Uh, what is the uh, uh, rationale behind closing the fascia? Is that right? Is that what? Yes, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Of the scalp, you after the harvesting of the vessel, you close the fascia tightly. So Vivek is asking, what is the rationale behind that? Is that uh, does that have a bearing on the survival of the flap? Uh, what What do you think is the science behind it? No, as mentioned earlier, I think it's only because to prevent infections. Is that a prevention? Oh, I already uh, demonstrated in my video, uh, like uh, after harvest the STA, yeah. actually I fixed it uh, from uh, inner side, sometimes with uh, dural uh, flaps. So after this kind of treatment, uh, it, it's very rare to have some scalp infection. Okay. Only prevention of infection, but uh, as such, uh, uh, on the vascularity, you think that has a bearing or no? Vascularity of the flap, you think uh, closure has a bearing on the vascularity or no? Uh, sorry, I, I... Oh, all right. I mean, that's <laughs> fine. Thank you. Roger, can you translate that? Sorry? Can you translate his question, please? I don't think Dr. Ben can hear the question. Yeah, 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 I'll do that. He's asking, is there any survival advantage of the flap by doing so? The skin flap? Other than infection. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, uh, much, much faster than the cut down technique. It only takes uh, several minutes to harvest the STA. And uh, when you cut the uh, flap, you're never worried about uh, uh, the put, uh, the potential risk to cut the STA. Right, Professor Kimura is Thank there. You. Professor Hideko Kimura. Uh, I see Kimura Sensei. Oh, how are you? Yeah. Nice yeah. to see you. <laughs> Hi, Thank Kimura. You. <laughs> yeah, how are you? Yeah. Fine. <laughs> nice to see you. Now. <laughs> how yeah. are you? Nice presentation. I have a with your presentation. Thank yeah. You. So. I just uh, my comment uh, regarding to the revascularization for the anterior cerebral territory. Maybe mm -hmm. STA uh, should be harvested as long as possible. And I can yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. And I can understand most to the ACA territory by using the large craniectomy. So, yes, you know the yeah, ACA, know, yeah. the, the frontal uh, branch of the yes, STA yes. is not is normal curved. And yeah. when you harvest it, it, actually, when you make it a straight, uh, yeah. it can be made longer. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe sometimes as a simp uh, simple SDMC anastomosis, maybe sufficient to the harvest uh, to the revascularization to the anterior territory. Yes. This is my comment. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Professor Thank Ali you. Akram wants to come in. Professor Ali Akram, can you hear us? Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Thank yeah. you. Yes, hi, yes. Professor Pinzu. Uh, hi, John. How are you? Hi. My question to Professor Pinzu. Hi. It was a long time uh, since we met in uh, Mumbai, Professor. Ah. Nice hi. to meet you again. <laughs> yeah, uh, nice to meet you. My, uh, my uh, question to you, uh, what is uh, the type of needle that is, uh, that is used? It is always should be around. Uh, can we use spatulated uh, needle? Is there any recommended uh, diameter for the needle, like uh, 70 micron or 200 micron? Or I'm digging in the details. I know. Uh, it's a 10 zero uh, proning suture, so it's a. Uh, oh, uh, always the you are is, using the yeah, 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 needle, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no yeah. spatulated yeah, yeah, needle. Yeah. yeah. And from Ethicon, of course. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you, Professor. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, are you there? Yeah, who is there? Yeah. I'm Dr. Sunil. Yeah, Professor, please. He's my own teacher. <laughs> welcome, sir. 
is there any role for this doppler for immediate post op doppler study immediate post op any role to find out is it patient? yes yes we we also use doppler uh, but uh, doppler only uh, can uh, uh, measure the speed of the, uh, the the velocity of the uh, blood flow and uh, because we uh, we have some uh, uh, other tools like uh, nova system because this is uh, this topic is only about the technique uh, not about the measurement of the blood flows and the hemodynamic change so uh, we also use Doppler, yes, intraoperatively. Uh, yes, and if you find that the flow is not adequate, will you reopen? Hmm? If, if the flow is not adequate on Doppler, would you do a redo anastomosis depending on the Doppler or would you like to perform angiography? I never redo any uh, bypass. Until now, <laughs> sorry. Right, so you have a hundred percent accuracy rate. The question doesn't come in. Thank you, Dr. Sunil, for asking. Are there any more questions, please? Yes, yes. I have a one question, please. Yeah, please. Uh, I'm so sorry for disturbing you. Uh, it's imp uh, it's important for you to use a low eight hundred images or color mapping during this bypass surgery. I think Professor Bin has been disconnected. Is it? Hey, John, can you confirm? Okay, hold on. Hold on. Hi, John, how are you? Uh, yeah, yeah ahead, I think he has left. Go ahead. How are you, John? I'm Dr. Good, Ali how Akram. How are you? Okay, welcome. Uh, I think uh, Dr. Benzo has left the meeting. Yeah, I think so. Well, yeah. anyways. He's uh, back. He's that, back. Yeah. He's back. He's back. Right. Great. <laughs> I can't see him so far. Go ahead, Sakin. Go ahead. Yes, yeah, Sachin, can you? Yes, yeah, sir. Oh, so, excellent presentation, sir. I've been a big fan of you. I've watched your videos on YouTube many times, and uh, that's how I've studied Moyamoy also. But one small question. There's one video you showed where you said the donor vessel was very thin, and whenever you're taking a suture, the needle is causing a big hole there. And then at the end, you're struggling with the blood loss. So you have, you, you mentioned a lotus uh, knot technique there. That's an excellent uh, uh, technique. I was just wondering whether can we use these Botex sutures? They are very commonly used by uh, vascular surgeons. So where the, the suture material actually is sort of expandable. So whenever you take a knot, uh, the suture material expands and then it gives you very nice uh, uh, closure. I don't know whether... Uh, are you able to see my screen? Yes. Yeah, we can. Uh, so that's uh, uh, just just to make my question clear. So this is what vortex suture, and this is what normal our uh, proline. So this is what vortex suture needle and uh, proline needle. And you can see thread is constant, but here the thread becomes expandable. So if you take the nor uh, the eye here, you can see the proline. The eye is big, and here with the vortex suture, the eye is closed. So can that be one of the way to avoid those kind of incidences where you showed? Uh, you know the struggle at the end. Oh, so, uh, searching, I, I, I can hardly, uh, because the uh, connection is not very uh, stable. Uh, do you mention some uh, expandable suture? Yeah, yeah, that's what he said. Yeah, saying. expandable suture. Okay, I never use that. Right. I can see. Thank okay. you, Sachin. They are very commonly used by the vascular surgeons. Mm -hmm. Thank right. you. Professor Muthu Kumar is Maybe. here. <laughs> Professor Muthu Kumar, would you like to come in, sir? I see, Professor. No, Doctor, right. I don't have any question. I just joined halfway through, but I really enjoyed the talk. Right. Welcome, sir. Welcome. 
uh, any more dr radha would you like to come in yeah hi um dr radha um from jordan and uh, the middle east um well that was a just great presentation and all um effort appreciated from prof pen zu uh, i just have a small question uh, if you can hear me doctor yeah yeah um, is there a limited age at which you can do efficiently that um, SDMCE bypass? Like age um, limitation? Yeah, and children. A children? Yeah. Uh, actually, um, the youngest one I performed the, the bypass, direct bypass is uh, for Moya Moya is uh, uh, four years old. But actually, uh, according to our follow up uh, results, uh actually uh, beneath the year uh, younger than six year or seven years old actually the uh, indirect uh, edms the result is almost the same as a combined uh, approach like uh, stmca combined with edms so uh, normally uh, if the patient is younger than uh, seven years old i only use the indirect one so younger than seven, you will do the combined and at age yeah, seven. Yeah, 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 yeah. And in elderly, is it the same result or it's worse? Yes, it's almost the same. All right. And one more And the, actually the, the, the uh, advantage of the indirect one is uh, you, uh, you uh, only uh, take a much shorter time. Uh, you can save around a half an hour at least. So uh, from skin to skin, only take maybe 45 minutes or 50 minutes. So that's uh, very good for pediatric patient. Perfect. And if you allow me to ask one more question, um, mm -hmm. okay. do you frequently um, inject a heparin intravascularly, like just uh, before the completion of the suturing? Do you usually or frequently use the um, heparin um, inside the artery? Yes, uh, I, we always uh, irrigate the uh, uh, vessels in a cavity with uh, heparin saline. And that depends on the intraoperative bindings or there's um, a specific dose you always give in, the, your, in your operation? It's always, always is a routine. Yeah, uh, yeah, I know, with a specific dose or it's depends on the Ah, uh, it's a uh, dose is uh, uh, around uh, ton, uh, four, uh, uh, 50, uh, 50 uh, yeah, international uh, unit per, uh, per yeah, millimeter. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Zadab. Thank you. Dr. Yeah, please. Yeah, please do. Yeah. Please. Dr. Watson. Yeah, sir. yeah. I have a final one question. Second, uh, one, second, Ali, doctor. one second, Ali. Let Dr. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. My, my question is: If there is a oozing from the anastomosis sites, for how long you will wait? And if there is no stopping of a leakage for uh, ten minutes, then would you repair the stitch again? My question uh, is: This, this is a very uh, real case. Uh, like uh, oozing, like the video in, I just presented. Uh, this this patient, I uh, it uh, taking around uh, ten minutes. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yes. but, but, if, if there is no uh, no stop of the bleeding, but ten minutes, then would you repair mm -hmm. this? Normally, actually, there's no oozing when I remove the temporal clip. Okay. Yes, Dr. Ali, thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you, thank you, Dr. Uh, uh, how long the brain uh, can tolerate uh, the clamping? Uh, 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 how long was the longest period you faced uh, temporarily clip application? Uh, in my series, uh, that case I just presented, uh, it's around the uh, Temporal clip time is around uh, half an hour. Yeah, that's the longest half. one. In, so in my if, one. If, 
so if it is more than one hour, I, I will expect ischemic uh, events. That depends on the, again, the reserve of the brain. Well yeah, so uh, that's why, uh, that's why uh, I say the, the shorter, the, the better. Of course, Time of is course. Always, of uh, course. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, but uh, I'm asking about uh, your experience uh, specifically. So, so you can see my uh, uh, trainees, uh, they all, after uh, the first year, normally they take around 40 minutes to uh, finish the stoma and uh, now they can around uh, 20 minutes. Yeah, even uh, uh, Dr. Alicia, uh, she performed the seventh and the uh, eighth uh, bypass. Uh, she, uh, the temporal clip time is already achieved 20, uh, 23 minutes. Okay, so is there a pre-medication to clap application specific uh, pentothal or something else? Well, what specifically you use there? Mm -hmm. Temporal clip? No, any, any brain protection do you use during your anastomosis? Like giving sodium pentothal, thiopenton or any, any other preferred methods before the uh, application I, of a clamp. I beg your pardon, the, the, the sounds is uh, uh, not very good. There is not good connectivity. He was asking about that any neuroprotective measures that you use before a temporary clipping. No, no, not special. There's no special drugs. Yeah. Uh, are there any Thank more questions? Harshal, would you like to come in? Harshal, are you there? Uh, Shall I? Was, someone's sharing the screen there. Dr. Watsal, please uh, stop sharing the screen. Yeah. Yeah, Harshal, come in, please. Yeah, my connection is not that stable, actually. I'm barely able to hear. Okay, please don't use the screen share if your connection is bad. Right, right. Fine. Uh, are there any more questions? Hello? No, I think in that case we would uh, wind up. And uh, I would like to thank Professor Subin uh, on behalf of the ACNS Education Committee who has done an excellent job. So we learned a lot from you today and we hope to continue your support for the ACNS in the future webinars also. Thank you very much for all the audience who have attended here and uh, hope to see you next saturday we are having a, a talk from dr kajita about uh, functional neurosurgery dbs deep brain stimulation in movement disorders hope you all will join us and this, again it's the same time on saturday professor zubin i would like to thank you again uh, thank you for the excellent lecture thank you everybody thank you thank you roger thank, thank you, you uh, john yeah thank you thanks john Thank okay. you, Bean. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.